Hello, hello. Or welcome back to the channel, you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry it's been longer than I had hoped. I had hoped to have this video out a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, I have terrible luck. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I caught the flu. You know, good times. Uh, you know, zero stars. I don't recommend. Avoid, if at all possible. It was, uh, pretty crummy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was pretty sure I was dying. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got, like, <laughs> hit twice. Or, like, at least kicked while I was down. Um, incredibly long story short. Uh, I'm on medication that, for like a, an eye condition, essentially the veins in my eyes don't drain fluid like they're supposed to, and the two meds that I'm on, like, make them do their job, and because they're powerful enough to do that, uh, the transition period to get used to them, um, is not fun. Uh, it takes like a month or so, give or take a couple weeks, and... It's a terrible transition. I've been on the meds for three and a half years, so the transition is long past because I've been on them for so long. But uh, eight or nine months ago when I started my new job, um, we'll just say a stupid and unfortunate series of events happened and I was unable to get to the neurooptometrist to get re-prescribed for my medications and within three months of my new employment I ran out. So I haven't had my medication for like six months or so which doesn't necessarily hurt me. Um, prolonged periods if I don't take care of it it could permanently damage my vision. It gives me massive headaches because the pressure and stuff like gets too much in my head and I hear what I um, equate to as like severe swimmer's ear. Uh, in my left ear I hear like a uh, like a, a swooshing sound that you, you you hear when you have swimmer's ear. It's like a wet liquidy swooshing sound and I'm told that's my heartbeat in all the fluid buildup. It is so annoying. I hear it uh, constant. I, I heard it every day straight for four months. Uh, definitely don't recommend. Don't do that. Uh, it was horrible. It drove me insane. So finally got the medication. Um, I've been on it for two weeks now. Uh, that roller coaster has been awesome. It's a terrible roller coaster. Uh, that's an also don't recommend. That's an up and down terrible thing. So the day after I took my very first um, dose, I got hit with the flu. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> still dealing with it. Uh, so <coughs> apparently I'm gonna die on camera. It's cool. You saw it here first. No, okay. Alrighty, whew, alrighty. Anyway, uh, so, day after the first dose, felt like I got hit by a bus. Realized it wasn't just the medication that was making me feel so bad, also the flu. Uh, yeah, so, good times, medication, ups and downs. I either feel no emotion or I feel all the emotion. Uh, I think I cried one time when I told someone hi. It's a terrible thing. Ah, it's such a terrible roller coaster. I got like another two, three weeks of <laughs> gloriousness of that. I, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel kind of vague right now, so if I, I seem a little off, that's probably why. I don't really know how to explain it other than vague. I feel real lethargic. Uh, my body feels kind of heavy, but I also feel floaty. Uh, yeah, anyway, the flu is gone, thankfully, 
and now it's just the medication stuff so i feel real tired i've done nothing but sleep so this video is a long time coming and i'm really sorry for that so to the video i do feel fine so don't worry about that like i feel okay i just feel really tired um but the bag uh i will say with the bag this bag is for me set up this bag set up for me um while it works for me right now it will not work for you or probably won't work for you it's set up for me my situation my needs you know uh, my area that kind of thing um shouldn't and won't work for you you're a different person in a different area different needs that kind of thing uh it is a good starting point a good place to get basis of information a good starting point for ideas things such as that so if you look at the bag and you go well that bag sucks it's not going to work for me it it's not it won't and it shouldn't so uh don't worry this bag isn't for you it's just kind of a starting point what i did for my general area i am in a i don't know suburban sort of area i'm not like I'm not urban, I'm not really, I don't want to say rural, I mean I am and I'm not, I'm definitely not city, I'm just sort of country area. Um, I, I drive to an urban place and I drive home. So this is a setup for if I got caught at work and I couldn't get home and I had to stay overnight there. So this is a emergency overnight bag in case I couldn't get home and I had to get a hotel room or a worst case scenario, I had to stick it out and sleep in my car. That's all this bag is for. This bag is not if I had to hoof it home 62 miles. I'd have to have a completely different bag, completely different setup. That is not what this is. So just for, just so you know. Uh, anyway, I've been calling it my EDC bag. Uh, it could be an emergency bag. It could, you could call it whatever you want. Uh, EDC, for those of you who do not know, it is called, that is everyday carry. It means literally just that, things that you carry every single day. Everybody has EDC, whether you consider it that or not. Uh, my best, um, Example of that is this. Everybody has it. Your cell phone. You carry this every single day. Um, some people are attached at the at the hand for this thing. Um, their lives are on it. Maps are on here. Um, there are. I'm pretty sure there's some neat like medical things that you know have your allergies on here, your sensitivities, your you know whatever your contacts are on here. Um, Google's on there. Google knows all. Uh, my most important thing, uh, Kindle's on here. Kindle is life. My books. Books are with me everywhere. Um, stuff like that. It's a very uh, useful tool. I'm not preparing for zombie apocalypse. I'm not preparing for the world to end. I'm just preparing for, in case I can't get home, for you know a few we'll say 24 hours if I can't get home everything I need is here my books you know whatever uh, that kind of thing I will say <clears throat> there are things on here I would switch around um, that I think would work better I'll get to those when I get to them and I explain uh, I'm missing stuff out of here that as funds allow I'll <coughs> <clears throat> as funds allow I'll purchase and whatnot and as funds allow I'll switch things out as I think they would work better some of the stuff I put on here just simply because they are what I had lying around you know that kind of thing so this bag as you can probably tell is absolutely chock full it is just a scant inch too small and as the things that I would like to put in here 
um, are purchased, as again, funds allow, it's gonna be really too small. So um, as I get the things that I want, I'll have to upgrade to a bigger bag. So I'm actually gonna swap uh, views so that way I can lay them out on the chase so you can see uh, the bag better and as things come out, how I've got them uh, organized and, and whatnot in the bag. So let me s switch stuff around. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see the bag now. So longtime viewers of the channel might recognize the bag. This is the bag that I took, or one of them. Um, this is the Red Rock Canyon sling uh, bag that I took to Disney World in January of 2018. It is reversible for the shoulder. You can switch this um, and this back and forth so you can swing it in which direction. So it is reversible for your shoulder. Uh, you've got loops so you can attach things to. I've got a locking carabiner down here. So we will start on the outside. Um, so this is the one downfall to the bag um, and why I say that I have no intention of hiking with this bag. Uh, I could never hike home the 62 miles with this bag. Um, I would like to say I could probably hike home the 62 miles, but I'm so out of shape I probably couldn't. I could do it if I had to, but not in this bag. This would kill me. I might, I could do it with a regular backpack. I mean, I'd like to say I could do it because I had to, but I this would not be my preference. So I have a reflector band. It is a bracelet. It's like one of those old school slap bracelets. So. It's on here, so if I set it down, I could shine a light on it and find my backpack. If I had to hike on the side of the road, then I could slap it on myself. And I am now reflective, um, so dual purpose. There are a lot of things on here that is dual purpose. That is um, kind of the name of the game for some of this stuff. Uh, this is a concealed carry pocket. I do not use it for that. Um, I do own a firearm, but if I have my firearm with me, it would be on me, not on my backpack. Um, if I can get my hand down there. Um, I have hand and toe warmers. This is another reason why like, I'm going to have to be moving some things around. It is getting to be spring, so it's not gonna be cold uh, for very much longer. I'm not gonna need these uh, for very much longer. So for the winter time, this made sense because it gets cold here. So for now, this makes sense, but once the seasons change, uh, I'm not gonna need uh, hand and toe warmers. Bottle holder. I do have a water bottle with me at all times. Uh, sometimes I carry two, one that stays in the car and one that's with me. I do have a gallon of water that's in the back of the car all the time. So there's, uh, I do have water with me all the time in the car. Here is a tactical pin. This one is a, uh, what is this? A lifeline, this one I got Amazon. It's a uh, tactical pin like multi-tool. So the pin, it's still got the top piece on it. So the pins on this side, the glass breaks on this side. Um, let's see, it's got multiple things. It's got a, let's see, this is the um, Phillips flathead this piece like comes off if I can pop it off of there maybe this piece comes off of here and this is a um, whatever you want to call it the SD get my phone 
it's supposed to be like the um, like your SD whatever pinhole thing for your phone so you can pop that out and then it just goes back on there and then that goes back on so it was it's a multi-tool and oh the bottle opener so it's several several things in one and then uh your belt clip or whatever that you have and then it just sits in there all the time um, i've got two locking uh d-rings D that you can hook on this is actually one of the things i'm gonna change so it comes in its own carry case but it's a taser <laughs> don't I, I have no idea why. Um, this was just laying around. <laughs> so it's a Viper Tech. I don't know how long I've had this, to be honest. I think I bought it as like a gag gift. For myself, for whatever reason. Uh, I want to say that it was super cheap or something, like a couple bucks. <laughs> And I thought it was funny, so I got it for myself. Uh, but it's got like a the charging port. And then the reason I'm going to change it is I want mace instead. Why? Um, well, let me... So here's your... You can turn it on and it's on so it's ready to go so it's startling i'll go ahead and hit it it it's startling so be ready uh it's intimidating that's what i wanted it to begin with it's intimidating uh it's scary but you have to be close to me in order for me to jab you with this so you have to be within an arm's reach in order for me to to get you with this. Uh, for Mace, I only have to have you within 15 feet. And then I got you. So if I'm in a threatening situation, for you to be within an arm's reach of, of me, for me to get you with this, means I'm also within an arm's reach of you. So you could also get me. For Mace, if you're within 15 feet of me, I can get you in 15 feet and I'm still plenty safe. I'm 15 feet away from you. So I, I would rather have Mason be 15 feet clearance. Um, a lot of people recommend bear mace, but bear mace is for bears and it's illegal for you to uh, spray people with that. So don't, don't get bear mace with the intent of spraying people because that's illegal. Don't do that. So uh, it came in the carrying case, so I just hook it to the outside so it's uh, accessible. Um, a spare pocket knife. I say spare because I have one in my pocket at all times. So this one is a SOG Switch 2. Uh, I carry a uh, Kershaw uh, Zero Tolerance. This one is a... Some of them will call them flippers, but they're um, the they're self assist or whatever you want to call them. So I like the combo blades. So this one's a SOG Twitch 2. I carried this one for quite a long time. They're quite quite nice. So this one is my my spare one. The one that I carry in my pocket is a is this one. This one is uh, quite quite large compared to the other one. This one is uh, quite the beast. I used it today so it's a uh, it's dirty. So my SOG is in there all the time. My morale patch. Um, <laughs> 
I still managed to get, I got this off of Etsy, so it's fun. It does um, hide my um, little, little guy. This is a um, sort of low pro profile handcuff key. So I'm supposed to be able to unlock uh, it's supposed to be a universal handcuff key, so I'm supposed to be able to unlock any, almost any handcuff uh, with that. You're supposed to actually be able to put this on like your belt loop, and then if um, you get taken, then say you get kidnapped, they're going to check you for stuff. That one's supposed to be low profile on your belt loop, and then they're not going to, they supposedly not notice so that's just uh, hidden behind my morale patch. These are quite tight on here because it's, again, it's a jam-packed full um, deal. This is a Cree, uh, which one is this, Q5 flashlight. Some of this stuff I got uh, in my survival boxes if some of you saw some of those, I think that's where this one came from. So it's a Cree Q5 um, flashlight, the Ultra Fire. So just a just a little flashlight. It's quite quite bright. You can just toggle. I don't think you have to hit the yeah. Goes in the strobe. High. There's the low in the high. Uh, it does like it goes in and out. Just a, a nice little flashlight. You never know when you need one. Um, I want to say that's everything on the outside. I put everything out there for like ease of access. So heat, defense, you never know when you need a light, more defense, you know, mostly defense and, and heat and light. Um, this is my, like, medical pouch. I, I won't, like, open all of this stuff. This is just, like, standard, I guess we'll call it, like, a boo-boo kit. It's just band-aids, antibiotic, ointment, stuff like that. Uh, this is, they call a ranger band. They're just a more heavy duty rubber band really. I put it in a Ziploc bag to waterproof it. Um, these are Hydroskin band-aids or Hydroseal something band-aids. They're just like blister band-aids and then Neosporin spray. Again in a baggie to help um, waterproof it. And then the sort of the med kit. So I've got um, Advil, ibuprofen, I have wet wipes, I have Midol, I've got um, Excedrin migraine. Uh, the only thing I know that I'm missing are the medications that I just received or like just got re-prescribed. Those are missing. Uh, Imodium AD. Uh, a lot of people miss Imodium 80. If you're out of town and you eat something bad and it reacts poorly to you, uh, Imodium 80 or Pepto um, is almost always missing out of there and you really miss Pepto <laughs> or Imodium 80 when you need it. So those need to be added into here. But I'm, I've got like all the main ones. It's just my meds and Pepto or Imodium is missing out of here. And Again, I don't have like heavy duty uh, in-depth stuff. It's just glossing the surface because I don't need something heavy duty. This is supposed to be like an overnight bag. You do notice I've got like survival stuff because I can't seem to help myself. Um, I, it's just, <laughs> I, I just can't seem to help myself is about the, the best way that I can um, 
describe it. I, I really have no self-control when it comes to that. Anyway, uh, we'll go to this little pouch if I can find the things. Uh, this is some... I love these little jars. I get them at Walmart in like the travel section. And I use this to put like my rings and my earrings in when I go to sleep at night. I just use them to travel. So overnight when I take them out, this little deal is my catch-all. Uh, that way I don't lose something. Um, external battery. Uh, this is a Antomi or something. I uh, got this at Sam's. It was a two-pack, so I got two of these. Uh, maybe 30 bucks or something. I use these all the time. These are wonderful. They fit in my pocket really nice. Uh, I keep them charged all the time, and they charge my phone like three, four, or five times before they die. They're wonderful. Again, in a baggie to waterproof them. So I leave one fully charged in my in my emergency bag all the time. It's, I travel with those constantly. Uh, spare chopstick. I have one in my pocket all the time, but on the very rare occasion that I actually lose it, I, I don't lose my chopstick usually, but just in case, there's a spare one. Uh, my lens cleaner, because you just never know when you need a lens cleaner. And a spare pair of contacts that is more accessible than in my toiletry bag because I'm very paranoid about losing contacts. Uh, if you wear contacts, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll have to let me know in the comments. If you're as paranoid as I am about ripping or losing or whatever a pair of contacts because uh, that is one of my biggest fears, living 62 miles away from my house and not being able to see. Uh, I don't know if you can see my prescription, but I am absolutely blind. Uh, if I don't have contacts, can't see, I'm not safe to drive, like nothing I can't see. Um, that is all that's in there. This next, actually here, we'll do this pocket. I've already ripped a bunch of that. This is the, uh, the fun pocket, I guess we'll call it. This is the snack pocket. I have three of these Jack Link's uh, beef sticks. Uh, this is like the morale pocket. This is the uh, eat my feelings pocket. Uh, I do have some utensils on the very off chance. Oh, I poked through the baggie. Well, that's sad. Uh, I did at one point have like a freeze dry meal in here. But on the off chance that I need to like make something, I, I have a military issue P38 can opener and like utensil in there. And then this is a light my fire, um, like, I don't know what they call it, survival, I think, utensil. There's a, uh, there's a not serrated edge on this side and then the fork and the spoon. I, I don't, I had a freeze dry meal in here until there was just no room and now I don't have anything but just in case, uh, well, maybe I'll need it, who knows. So three things of jerky because, you know, beef jerky is, uh, got a lot of protein and all that in there. Uh, this is caffeine gum. So if I'm driving home late at night and I'm just really tired, I might be able to give myself a boost with some caffeine gum. Kind of the same, oh, not ready for you. Uh, same thing with this, this is caffeine mints. So if I don't really feel like chewing gum, I can give myself a boost with the mints. Paracord, uh, there's just so many useful things with paracord. Uh, you just never know. <laughs> Worst case scenarios, uh, I can tie, you know, I can tear this open and use the inner strands and <laughs> I can do fishing line, I can use it for snare, I can use it to 
repair my gear, um, if I wasn't super squeamish, but I totally am. I could use it for stitches, but I'd totally pass out first. Um, I'd probably vomit and then pass out. So stitches are no-go, but you could use them for stitches. Uh, you can use the paracord to string up shelter. I mean, they're, the uses are endless. Or, you know, you can just carry around a hank and then know what they're for and just totally never use it. Uh, again, you could do a bunch of stuff with this. So I just carry around a little bit of it because, you know, makes it makes me feel useful. Um, that is all that's in there. Uh, let's see. In the next pocket, I have the Baddest Bees Fire Fuses. Uh, I have I am really fascinated with fire. I don't like start fires just to start fires, but I could. This stuff is wax impregnated, um, like cotton essentially. So this, you would take one of these out, you'd fluff the ends of it up, and then it would catch fire incredibly quickly because it's wax impregnated, which makes it incredibly flammable. So it just helps with your fire starting. And then this is a um, weatherproof like match holder. And then on the inside, you can probably guess, are matches. So I have like my own little fire kit there. If I needed one for whatever reason. You can probably tell I'm like really over prepared. If I didn't have any water and I needed water and I needed clean water to drink then I have a water filter. I could drink out of this end oops flip the top put this end in the water and then drink out of this end and then have clean water. Again, I realize I'm still sort of surviving-ish in the bag. This is probably way over prepared for an overnight bag, but again, I can't really help myself. This is just a, like an antibacterial uh, pin for like hand sanitizing. You never know when your hands need to be cleaned. The next thing is I have a Gerber multi-tool. It's probably just a good idea to carry a multi-tool all the time. It's just a, you know, standard, standard multi-tool. Nothing really all that fancy about it. Ferris rod and a striker. Uh, another way to start fire, if necessary. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I am only a little bit fascinated with fire and being able to start it. I don't, again, I don't just start fires, but I carry around a lot of different ways to start them. I don't know. That's just how it goes, I guess. Anyway... Um, move it over so you can see. Uh, that is all that's in the small pockets. So we are now down to the last pocket, which is the biggest pocket. And this <laughs> is what it looks like. So I have my mechanics gloves, which are my work gloves. Um, these have been beat up. I can't say enough good things about these things. They're they're wonderful. I I use them quite often. Um, I'm gonna pull both of these out. I'm not gonna show what's in here. I, it's just a toiletry bag. That's all this is. I have just travel toiletries in it. Uh, I bought the bag on Amazon, so it's just that's literally all this is. It's just. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, a brush, um, that kind of thing. I'm very, uh, 
I don't know, low maintenance, very minimal, so I, I don't need a bunch of stuff. So it works perfect for me. This is called a like a drop kit, a D-R-O-P-P -P kit bag. So it works quite perfect. <laughs> this is actually the bag it came in. So I repurposed it to put my change of clothes in it. And it's just a t-shirt, socks and underwear rolled into this. We're talking emergency circumstance. If I had to not come home, I what's the minimum things I could change? And, or like the minimum things that I had to change or whatever. And this was what I came up with for like, what is the stuff I had to change and what could I get past, like, I can rewear my jeans. So, um, that was what my, my decision was. I could rewear my jeans and that care, that cut down on what I could pack. So, the rest is all in here and then I wrapped it and put it in the bag that this thing came in. So I thought that was kind of neat that I could reuse it. So uh, that's my change of clothes in a neat little little bag. Um, in the little back, I have a little thing of zip ties because you just never know when you need zip ties. An emergency blanket could count as your sleeping bag. I have a zero degree sleeping bag in the back of my car, um, so that isn't necessary really. This could add in, or be added in as like a liner to my sleeping bag. I could use it as a shelter, um, a very minimal tent or something like that if need be, if it really came down to it. But again, I'm not in the boonies. I'm not in the wilderness or whatever. I'm in a rural, suburban, whatever you want to call it area. I'm not out in the middle of a forest somewhere. So I I don't necessarily need to retreat to the trees to take shelter. That's that's not really what I'm what I need to do. But I do have this for like additional warmth or if there's an accident and for whatever reason I'm recruited to help, this helps for shock, you know, to keep body heat in something along that lines. Um, that is it for that. I'm gonna leave that out. Oops. Um, Kleenexes, because uh, you always need Kleenexes. I will add, like, my Right in the Rain journal and, like, a, a Sharpie. I, obviously, I, I carry my phone, but, um the right in the rain. So say uh, you need to leave a note somewhere. You know, you need to leave your car. Um, you don't want to write on your car. You don't have paper in the car. You need to leave the note on the outside of the windshield. Um, you're going to leave it on the windshield wiper or whatever. Raining, whatever. This is going to not soak away, you know, whatnot. Um, these are quite popular now. I have a bunch of these from being in school. I majored in earth science, which for the school that I went to means geology for the most part. So for geology, these are all we use for geology. Um, so if you want to take notes while you're hiking, whatever, this is what we use. So uh, if you need to leave a note at camp, need to leave a note on your car, uh, whatever, just have one of these in your bag, plus your Sharpie. Um, this will eventually go in my bag, but obviously my bag is like really full, so that's not going in there. Also, uh, these. Um, I find this incredibly ironic that I've been collecting these now. I've worked retail my entire adult life, well, just <laughs> my entire working life. 
especially in my old job, these were just, these are the devil. I don't know, if you work in the back room and you work around freight, these are literally everywhere. Uh, these are the silica packets that come in like every single box. They're great for me now because I'm collecting them so they're free. I just grab them, put them in my pocket and I come home and I get again. This is one, I wasn't even trying very hard. This is just a couple boxes of silica packets. Like I didn't try. Uh, why am I collecting these? So say you have your phone you slip and you fall or you trip or whatever, and your phone hits a water puddle. You don't have any rice, you don't have any way to get to it. What do you do? Silica packets, they're desiccate. They'll soak away the water, they soak everything up. You break a bunch of these up, you put them in the bag, you throw your phone in there, they'll work just the same as the rice does. So, you don't have, well, I don't have to buy the rice because I've already got the silica. So I was trying to be thrifty and all of that. Also, they're like a odor absorbent. So I figured if I got enough, I could just throw a couple in my bag, just open or like just like this, not in the baggie. And any odors that would come in, you know, potentially would be taken care of as well. So. Um, I was trying to grab a bunch of them. I mean, as you can maybe see it, like one of the bags have already broken open. There's, I mean, it's a curse. These silica packets, I mean, you'll look at them and they burst open. So, uh, this thing has literally done nothing but just sit here. Just has sat here and it's already broke open. Like, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, silica beads, you can buy them at the store. Like, people sell them. I think you can go to any like hunting and they sell big silica, um, they sell silica packs so you can put them in your um, like gun safes and stuff to keep the moisture and, and all that away. I've just been collecting them because I've been, I work in a back room, I work with freight. They're free because we just throw them away anyway so what difference does it make? Uh, but yeah, I figured you can put them in with your cell phone if it ever gets wet and it'll do the same thing as rice does. And I don't have to buy the rice or waste the rice. Most people throw these out anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, uh, that's my bag. <laughs> I say it's an overnight emergency bag. I do realize it's also like kind of a mini bug out bag too. Um, it's not like a zombie apocalypse bug out bag, but it is a survival overnight bag of a kind. So you'll have to let me know what kind of stuff is in your bag if you have one. Uh, if you think I'm missing anything out of my bag. Um, trying to think. I do know I'm missing some medications. I just started my meds. Uh, I just got them back like a couple weeks ago, so I haven't done that. I am transitioning seasons and again it's an ever-changing, ever-evolving sort of bag. Um, I I do need to sit down and kind of take a hard look at it again and it'll change as funds allow. That is the nature of the beast. So uh, I hope you like the bag. You'll have to let me know if you liked it or not. Um, so be sure to comment below if you liked it, didn't like it, uh, what you'd add to it, what you'd take away from it. Um, but yeah, just uh, let me know. Uh, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!